Hi, welcome to Stories from My Drinking Days. My name's Harry from Nolo Cocktails and Bars. And today we have uh, Lixi with us to discuss her journey with alcohol um, and how um, that's been changed in her life. So uh, Lixi's introduction, uh, at 23, she was divorced and living on a sofa after having left an emotionally abusive marriage. She transformed her life and in six years built a corporate career that she loves, quadrupled her income to hit six figures and bought her first property at 29 years old. Um, she's really happy to have built a life that she loves and is now a six-figure success coach, helping other women build the success they desire and deserve. So welcome, Lexi. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'd love to be here. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. So tell us a bit about... Um, your previous drinking habits and what you were doing sort of in your early 20s I should hasten to add for our viewers that uh, Lixie's still only 31 so she's still quite young um and young. partying still but uh yeah tell us tell us how you started drinking and kind of how that's affected your life do you think absolutely so I drank as an as a late teen obviously I was in a club on my 18th birthday as most of us are um then I went into the emotionally abusive marriage didn't really drink much at all when I came out of that I met a whole new group of friends and they definitely loved to party um which I got involved in and it was great and for the next eight years it was definitely a work hard play hard type of situation um so during the time I built my corporate career and hit six figures that was a Monday to Friday nine to five activity and then as soon as it would get to five o'clock on a Friday we'd be in the pub and that's where we'd spend the evening and then we'd probably do the same thing on Saturday and then Sunday morning we'd be back at the pub having breakfast to recover from the night before um and it was great fun I really enjoyed it it wasn't problematic it wasn't um it wasn't like I had a problem with alcohol it was we drank we drank regularly as I think a lot of the British culture encourages yeah. um yeah. because a lot of what we do involves alcohol um but nine it was nine months ago on Friday I made the decision to get sober um because I had health issues unrelated to alcohol um I'd been in a car accident that caused some stomach problems so I decided to give up alcohol in the hopes that it would help fix the stomach problems. Um, and I've seen the benefits that I've seen from giving up drinking are not just limited to the fact that I no longer have stomach problems. So it's been a real uh, 180 shift from what I was doing kind of this time last year, which was spending my summer in pub gardens, getting drunk all the time, and then really enjoying my nine to five, but wait at the weekend, I would then go and get drunk again. So that's kind of a quick recap of what I've been doing over the last right. eight years or so. Yeah. So did you find giving up alcohol fixed the stomach problems then? Was Did it help with that or? It definitely, it definitely helped. So it wasn't the cause of the stomach problems, but it definitely made the symptoms worse. Um, and previously I'd kind of just ignored that fact because I liked going out and getting drunk and yeah. drinking with my friends and sitting in the pub and it was great fun. Um, but I woke up um, one morning last October uh, after a night of drinking and the stomach pain was so bad that I um, I cried, which for anyone that knows me knows that that is a serious thing. I'd never cry. I'm not a crier. Um, and I kind of just took stock and was like, OK, I definitely need to do something to change this. And the, e the easiest and um, biggest change that I could make was to give up alcohol, which is what I did. Yeah. And how did you find giving up alcohol? Did you find that easy or was that quite tricky? I think because I had the health issues, it was easier than it would could have been. Um, I think if there, if I just made the decision to give up, I think it would have been a lot harder. I had the health issues to keep me focused, um, as it were. But yes, it was definitely it was definitely tough because I was the only one in my friendship group that was giving up drinking. Um, yeah. So I've got a couple of as a lot of people do, I've got a couple of different groups of friends all of them drink um because we're all British and it's what we love to do so I do I had I did find it quite difficult especially on special occasions so things like over Christmas I did a completely sober Christmas which is completely baffling there was no Bucks Fizz there was no Baileys in the evening um it was yeah it was it was very strange but it was I had a, I still had an amazing day um but it was definitely a very different experience to what I'm used to yeah and did you enjoy the experience or did you just 100%. find it actually quite difficult? 
No, I absolutely, I think I probably had a better day because I remembered it. Because one of the things that alcohol yeah. does is makes you lose your memories. So I am quite fortunate in that I don't really get hungover. So I don't get the headache. I don't feel sick the next morning, which I think is not a good thing because I think that puts you off drinking yeah. so often. Um, but I don't get that because apparently that's my superpower. Um, <laughs> so that was never the issue for me. But I do get the kind of the, the blackout and the, mem the memory loss I do get that quite badly so right. actually being able to remember like all of Christmas day and all of New Year's Eve has actually been really nice yeah yeah uh, so you mentioned that you found other benefits apart from obviously it helped with your health problems at the time so what do you think of it, what have been the main benefits for you of giving up alcohol mm. so I as I said I built a really successful corporate career that I do nine to five I also now run a coaching business which I've been doing for two years so for two years I was working full-time in corporate running a coaching business and spending my weekends drinking and partying um which is a lot to manage and one of the side effects of drinking is that you lose productivity for days afterwards so trying to get back into a really productive mindset by the time you've done that it's almost the weekend again and time for more drinking um, so that's one of the things that I've really noticed since giving up is that Monday morning comes and I'm already super productive and I get more done now on a Monday morning than I probably would have done on like a Wednesday afternoon normally um, because I don't have to get over like the brain fog of having spent the weekend drinking, which is awesome. And uh, I, I think with most people, when you've been out drinking the following day, you're tired because you haven't slept properly. Um, you spend the day eating comfort food. And I don't do any of that now, which is awesome. And I just feel like I've got a lot more free time, not because I'm not going out, because I still am, but because I don't have the after effects that alcohol causes now that I don't drink it. Yeah. And so what, so what are you doing with all this free time that you've gained? <laughs> <laughs> working on my business yeah um so yeah the business the business has become kind of more of a focus this year because I really I enjoy doing it I want to help other women build more success in their corporate careers um and this year I've been able to retire my mum on using the money that I would have spent on alcohol that has now gone towards the pot that I use to help to retire my mum so I've helped her financially retire which I would not have been able to do despite being really successful and owning a business I would not have been able to do that if I hadn't given up drinking because of the amount of money that is spent on the alcohol itself taxis the food on the night out the food the day after I don't do any of that anymore so I can now go out for an evening and not spend any money because I would drive because I'm not drinking I can drink tap water I'm because of the stomach issues I'm not big on drinking fizzy drinks so I would steer towards water more than I would to soft drinks um so yeah it's just been a really big shift in how I'm spending my time and money and it's meant I've been able to do amazing things like retire my mum yeah that that is pretty amazing I bet she's Thank really you. pleased and very grateful she absolutely yeah. she's been a full-time yeah. nurse for forever so I think it was definitely time for some payback because she is one of the reasons that I am as successful as I am so yeah, brilliant. Jeez, so are you currently working then in a corporate career as well as um, running your business? For the foreseeable future, yes, because I love yeah. my corporate career. But at the same time, it's a real passion of mine to help other women build more success in their corporate careers. Corporate is still a very male dominated industry. It's absolutely getting better. But there's still I still see women that don't believe that they can earn the sorts of money that I earn and that I earn at a really young age. And I want to change that perception and help ambitious women aim higher, because even when they are ambitious, I don't think that they aim high enough. Um, and there are lots of myths surrounding earning good money in that you have to work um, all hours of the day and it's a hustle culture and it's really toxic and I don't have any of that in my work life I've built the right boundaries and I I work nine to five I don't I'll, occasionally it might spill over I might be traveling but generally my work day is nine to five and then I get my free time to work on my business um, and that's the sort of things I want to share with other women and that's why I started Life with Lixie the coaching business right okay um so I'll just pop up your uh, website address there on the screen for everybody so um tell me about life with Lixi then how do you work with women and, and what sort of conversations are you having with people 
So the idea of it is to help women in corporate be more successful in their careers. So the the strategy I kind of use towards that is um, it's COS, as in because I said so. Um, so it's COS, which is confidence, organization and skills. I think those are the three key things that you need to be more successful in whatever role that you're doing. Generally, as a general rule, you will see men in higher roles, in higher paid roles, because they've had the confidence to go for them and they don't feel like they need it just as a I am generalizing here obviously it's not all it's yeah, not the same for absolutely. Yeah. um women tend to not apply for higher roles if they don't feel like they meet every single criteria in the job description they might meet nine out of ten but if they don't have that tenth one they won't apply for it because yeah. they don't think whereas if they applied for it there is a really good chance that they could have got it so the first thing I like to cover when I'm working with my clients one on one is just building up their confidence in themselves and their abilities and seeing what they're already good at. And then the second thing is organisation. I think a lot of people struggle with how to manage their day, how to look after their own diary, how to make sure they're focusing on the right things and not just keeping themselves busy with um, tasks that don't kind of push you forward towards your goals. Um, and that's definitely something that's helped me in my own success is learning to focus on the right things instead of kind of filling my time with busy work. And then the final thing of the three is your skills. So what skills don't you currently have that you could improve to get you um, further ahead in your career? But that one is definitely it's in my opinion, is not as important as the first two. Yeah, well, I mean, I've definitely seen it with friends that people don't apply for roles that you think actually they'd be really good at that because they don't quite tick all those boxes mm -hmm. whereas generally um yeah men would just go for it and yeah, assume they just they would learn it on the job yeah, exactly. exactly yeah they'll figure it out as they go so do um any of your conversations sort of touch on alcohol and and actually the productivity increase you've seen by giving up but or is that generally not something that you you would talk about with your clients abso i absolutely would talk about it it's not something that's come up yet with any of um the current clients i've talked about but i do talk about it a lot on my social media so my instagram and facebook groups where i am most active i do talk about a lot I do talk a lot about the fact that I've given up drinking and that I still go out. I don't sit just because I've given up drinking now doesn't mean I sit at home and do nothing. Um, I've still got groups of friends that absolutely do, do, out, do go out drinking and I go with them. I just don't drink, um, which some people find very strange. But what I found <laughs> is that if you're there when everyone starts drinking, so when they're sober, if you're there from that point and you kind of you're with them as they start drinking, then it's great fun and you still get involved in the vibe and it's yeah it's still a good time what I have found is is that if you turn up late and everybody's already been drinking that I personally find much tougher because it's more you're not yet in the same vibe it's more difficult to keep up with the conversation because drunk people tend to talk really fast and talk a lot of nonsense and if you've not been there when that started it's really hard to get involved in um but yeah as long as I'm there when they start drinking then it's absolutely fine and I still I would still go out with them every weekend and have a great time yeah and so how have they reacted to the fact that you've given up drinking because I think that's that's one of people's big fears is what other people will think about the fact that they've given up mm -hmm. It's been it, overall, it's been absolutely it's been supportive, especially as it's been because of the health issues that I've had. Um, I absolutely still get the jokes constantly about are you going to drink tonight or um, wouldn't you just feel better if you had a jug of pims in front of you and that sort of thing. But I because they are my friends, I know that it's all in jest and they don't really mean it and they would absolutely wouldn't push the alcohol on me. Um, they So what I've said currently is that. Um, I won't start drinking again until the stomach ache is completely gone or I hit the year, whichever of those is later. So a year would be in October. So generally, I think there is a, um, there is a countdown happening within my friendship group to get to that point so that yeah. I will start drinking again. Yeah. Um, at this point, I don't I, I don't know. They're probably going to see this and hate this, but I don't know whether I will go back to drinking because of the benefits that I've seen not drinking um that remains to be seen but yeah they've been generally they've been quite supportive of the fact that I'm yeah. not drinking oh well that's that's really good do you think that if you went back to drinking do you think you'd fall back into 
the habits and you'd be keeping up with them? Or do you think that you're somebody that can moderate their drinking? That is a great question. And it's definitely one of the reasons that I don't know whether I'd go back because I would, I worry that I would fall back into the same patterns and I really don't want to do that. Um, but once you get, once you've had a drink or a couple of drinks, it's really easy to just have a couple more. Um, and it's, it's something I'm definitely going to have to ask myself and kind of think through whether I want to risk doing that because I really don't want to go back to drinking like I was before not because there's anything wrong with people that want to do that it's, it's your choice if you're quite happy with that yeah. and you do that but I'm really enjoying the, the extra time that I've got and how more, much more productive I feel and the money that I've saved not drinking so yeah, yeah. if it's I, I'm going to Iceland for Christmas this year and the idea of not sitting in like a lovely a bar on Christmas Day in Iceland and not having a drink is feeling really odd. But at the same time, I don't know if I would want to break a, a year in a bit of sobriety just to have one drink on Christmas Day. It just doesn't feel doesn't feel right. So yeah, at the moment, it's yeah. still, I'm still undecided. Yeah. So I mean, I just I, I don't know whether you've ever given up before. Have you ever done like a dry January or anything? Yeah, like a, few, that? a few times. Yeah. And have you just found that you just in the past have just fallen back into the drink, same drinking habits at the end of that? Yeah, period. definitely. We've counted down the 31 days until we can just go back to the drinking <laughs> yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is quite normal for people going through something yeah. like dry January. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, I can have a drink. Exactly. Yeah, first of yeah, February, because... I can't wait. <laughs> exactly because you know that there's a limit on it and mm. you've just set yourself a challenge of just not drinking for 31 days and then you go back to doing it as yeah. you were before absolutely yeah because I found um that I've done the 31 days before um and every single time I had gone back to drinking the way that I had been previously um and I realized that actually I can't moderate some people can do it really really well and they you know I've got a friend that opens a bottle of wine on a Friday night that's and she'll drink it over the weekend well in my house that wouldn't last that's friday nice. night <laughs> no, exactly. yeah no that wouldn't there's no way friday, a glass you, can't, you can't leave oh, it a bottle of wine um unfinished no no i'm exactly. completely with you <laughs> yeah. and that's what i mean that's why i'm concerned that if i do go back to drinking at all i won't moderate it and i'll just end up doing exactly what i was it's a lot easier to say not at all than it is to say one or yeah. two in my yeah. for, for myself anyway yeah and and that's the decision I came to about myself and I think you have to be really honest with yourself about actually whether or not it's achievable for you to to moderate your drinking and I know for me it wasn't now I I found I gave up for a month initially and then like you saw the benefits massively of giving mm. up alcohol um and decided that I would do with the year um and that was over four years ago now but oh wow uh, yeah during that year I just found that I just became a non-drinker if, if do you just I I just stopped thinking of myself as somebody that drank alcohol so I just mm -hmm. it wasn't even a question for me at the end of the year it, I was just not drinking have you reached that point or do you still think of yourself as a drinker that's just having a bit of a break this is yeah that's quite funny really I found a Mother's Day card in my desk drawer the other day that I'd forgotten to give my mum last year um and the joke on the front was something like for Mother's Day I was going to get you something um small and alcoholic and then when you opened it it said no need to though because you've already got me um and I was like could I save that and use that this year and then I thought to myself I was like I can't really because I wouldn't consider myself small and alcoholic anymore because I don't drink. So yeah. yeah, I think I've definitely got to the point now where I'm I'm not a drinker at this point in my life. Whether that changes in the future, at yeah. this point in my life, I'm not a drinker, which is quite not yeah. quite a nice feeling. Yeah. And have you missed any alcoholic drinks? People often crave different things. Have you? I I will admit I love beer. It is just I sitting in the sunshine with a nice cold pint is something that I just love doing. Thankfully, non-alcoholic beers now are really good and I can I will drink those instead. So um not I think there was once I was sat in an airport so I traveled solo quite a lot with work and previously I would have sat in a nice restaurant in an airport and had a glass of wine and there's been a couple of times when I've really wanted to do that um and didn't have the and didn't didn't do it because i didn't want to drink the wine um so it would have been nice then if they'd had a non-alcoholic wine on the menu so i could still have had my glass of wine but other than that 
no, I haven't missed it at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think often it's um, our cravings come out of habits, don't they? So you're used to, if you're traveling by yourself, sitting in the restaurant with a glass of wine, and it's trying to replace those things, either, I guess, with a non-alcoholic version of the drink yeah. or a different habit. Exactly, which that time, because it was fairly on in my sobriety, I, I had a non-alcoholic beer instead. Um, yeah. But even, so I'm nine months in now, and I wouldn't just have, so I went to a barbecue at the weekend for my friend's birthday, everybody was drinking. I think I took three non-alcoholic beers with me, so I wouldn't spend the evening drinking non non-alcoholic alcohol the same way that I'd have drunk alcohol. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would turn to water instead and have water because... I, it's a habit that I've managed to change and um, I much prefer it. Yeah. So uh, any on the non-alcoholic beers, any particular favourites that you found? Peroni is my favourite because it was my favourite alcoholic. Right, so that yeah. is definitely the one I will um, turn to if I'm if I'm wanting a non-alcoholic non beer. But I've, I've, I've had a few recently. I've tried 0% Corona recently, which is really good. Um, 0% Birra Moretti is also good and not 0% Heineken. Um, on the wine front, there are, there's quite a few non-alcoholic, I'm a Sauvignon Blanc drinker, so there are quite yeah. a few non-alcoholic white wines that are really good, but I think it very much depends on your tastes as well. So yeah. I've tried some that I've really liked, but my sister, who's not sober, she just occasionally will have a non-alcoholic drink, she's tried the same and she hates them. Um, so it definitely depends on your tastes and the kind of wines that you like, but you can get, um, I also previously like to drink gin and you can get non-alcoholic Hendrix which I've heard is really good um so yeah there's definitely a really wide range of choice now if you don't want to drink alcohol yeah yeah there is and it's it's forever growing as well it's such a, a expanding market so on the wines actually people are always after suggestions of great wines because I think that's that's the area of the market which I think is lagging behind slightly so any particular favorites on the wines Oh, that is a great question. Can I remember any of the of them off my off my head? Um, That's the thing. The brands are less recognisable, aren't they? So you know. Yeah, it's... I think I think Barefoot do a non-alcoholic one. Yeah, they do. No yeah. Secco is really good, um, which is obviously non-alcoholic Prosecco. That I really yeah. like, um, and also the. Um, is it is it Fre Frexinet? That's probably not how you oh, pronounce Frexinet. it. Frexinet, yeah. Yeah, with the really cool bottle. The yeah. non-alcoholic Prosecco um, of Frexinet, that's really good. That's basically tastes like you're drinking normal Prosecco. Um, which I've I not really tried liked. that one. I'm, I'm definitely going to go and, and get a bottle of that now because it's also it's yeah. a really good price, the Frexinet. So, uh, yeah. And yeah, I, I highly think, recommend that. Yeah, I think I, I haven't drunk any fresh net for absolutely ages and the last time that I had it it would have been the alcoholic version um, I didn't like mm. it I think that probably put me <laughs> off trying the non-alcoholic but on your recommendation that's definitely going on my list of things to try do it so, and where was I on Saturday I think it was Aldi doing 0% pills and a beer which was really good I, I, yeah you never really know what you're gonna get in Aldi but it was it was lovely so there might be some uh, non-alcoholic wines in there that are worth trying as well yeah, I know that Aldi and Little both do non-alcoholic um, spirits. Oh, really? So, yeah. So I don't know about the on the wine front, but it's it's definitely worth looking at the supermarket's own brands. Yeah. Um, Marks and Spencers do some really nice stuff as well. It really, I mean, it is an expanding market, isn't it? And you know, there yeah. are increasingly numbers of people sort of giving up alcohol for various reasons. Exactly. Um, or lim or just limiting the amount that we drink. Yes. We are definitely, I think pushed as a society towards drinking um but if you can if you don't you don't have to give up drinking there's absolutely no if it's not causing a problem in your life by all means continue um yeah. but I, I see more and more people that are trying to limit the amount they're drinking so maybe they'll do a weekend on and a weekend off or they'll only drink one evening a week or something so yeah having the more having more non-alcoholic options definitely makes that easier yeah yeah definitely yeah um or people just making different drinks like a Negroni but putting in one of the ingredients that's non-alcoholic actually just reducing the alcohol in that way so that's yeah, clever. There's, yeah there's so many different ways that you can do it um and mm -hmm. you know I or power to anyone that can moderate I just can't yeah. so <laughs> I, I don't try I don't think I did 
<laughs> I love that idea though yeah making a cocktail imagine making like a Long Island iced tea but you only have two out of the four alcohols that are in it that would probably yeah. that would probably be a much better idea yeah yeah I mean you're automatically almost halving your alcohol intake then yeah. aren't you yeah. Exactly. I will have a friend that's going to watch this and go, that is a disgrace. I can't believe you just suggested that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as long as you can find the right matches, then, you know, I think it is a really good idea. So have you also found then, you've mentioned drinking water quite a lot. Have you found that you're drinking a lot more water now than you used to? Yeah, so I've always been quite a good water drinker anyway, um, right. trying, yeah. trying to get in my uh, two and a half Based on my body weight, I have to drink two and a half litres per day. Um, and I've been quite good at that anyway. But yes, now when I go out, when I go out drinking, um, I will tend to have water instead of a non-alcoholic um, a non-alcoholic drink or a soft drink uh, because of my stomach issues. So I do tend to drink a lot more water than anything else now. And yeah. I'm one of those weird people that because I drink so much water, I can tell the different tastes of water. That's how much I now drink water. Wow. <laughs> they yeah, do taste different. Yeah. I will argue to the death with anyone that says that water tastes the same. It does not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you found your taste buds have changed actually since giving up alcohol? Um, I hadn't. I hadn't thought about it. Um, yes, I think they must have done because I tend to with my um, evening meal. I tend to use a food delivery service. It's kind of a, which is a kind of a step above HelloFresh. So I don't even have to cook it myself. It gets delivered and I put it in the oven. And I was, I was using that same service probably for about a year and a half. And now I don't really like any of the meals and I've had to completely change what I'm doing food wise. And I just talked it up to, I've been eating for them for too long, but perhaps it's not that. And perhaps it's related to my tastes having changed. Now I'd given up drinking. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Well, I, I just noticed, um, that actually with non-alcoholic wines for example I can't I don't like some of them if they're too sour whereas I used to love white wine and mm. drink lots I think that my taste buds have veered more towards sweet and I think that that's partly because I'm not drinking the white wine that was quite sour um, mm. and also because a lot of the non-alcoholic drinks probably are a bit sweeter anyway sort of in profile like the Nozeco I mean, I yeah. quite like a nose echo, but it is quite sweet. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I've definitely. So I've, I previously, I was, even, although I was drinking fairly regularly, I'm in the gym five days a week. The food that I'm intaking, apart from when I'm like, when I'm out drinking, um, was relatively healthy. And actually this year I've noticed I've eaten a lot more chocolate than I would have done previously. So I imagine if that's why I'm trying to replace the sugar that I would have got from alcohol with chocolate, perhaps yeah 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 maybe you are yeah because I mean, obviously there is a lot of sugar in the alcohol mm. yeah so much yeah but it sounds like you, you're you're really healthy gym five days mean. a week lots of water yeah so so what are your goals now um so this this year that I've had a lot of pain issues from the car accident I mentioned so obviously I've had stomach problems I had a recurrence of the, so I had whiplash for three years. I've had a recurrence of that nerve pain. So I've put on a little weight and I'm not moving as much as I was at the beginning of the year. So my goal now is to resolve that pain. The stomach problems seem to have gotten, I would say 95% better, which is amazing news. So yeah, the goal this year is just to keep my health at its peak. So make sure that stomach problems are completely gone get my movement back because the in the in the recurrence of the injury seems to be at, at its end and it's kind of moving away so yeah just getting back to being in the gym five days a week and then um I've got goals in my corporate career that I can't share because they're um yeah confidential um yeah. and then in the business is just helping as many women as I can build more success this year I would love to help between five and ten extra women this year um hit the income goals that they didn't even realize were possible for them yeah and so how can people work with you on that so if you go to my the website that was popped up earlier there's a little link in there where you can book a one-to-one -one coaching call that's probably the easiest way um they're currently 77 pound and we will just spend about an hour going through something that is currently 
holding you back so whether it is your confidence or um you're not managing your time or you're feeling really overwhelmed and you just need some support and a strategy in place to get you over that block and to the next place that's the easiest way and then from that then I've got my kind of longer term um one-to-one coaching so that's three months where we spend the three months kind of really focusing in on getting um you to the next level of success yeah Okay. And so it's mainly, you mainly work with people one-on-one then to, to really the moment, yeah, on it's, there. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely one, one I much prefer it. Yeah. Yeah. Getting, I would get really they, personal that way. Yeah. And they can get some really good goals and, and exactly. achievements really out of that as well. So is it, and it's just women in corporate careers that you work with? Is it generally, generally. Um, so I think what I teach could be used across any industry. So if you're a business owner, or you're not in corporate, but you are a professional of some kind, then the skills are abs- that I teach are absolutely transferable. I focus on corporate women because it's what I've done. I built a really successful corporate career before 30. So I absolutely know that what I teach you will help will help these women in corporate build a more successful career. Um, but it's not limited to that. If you're not in corporate, don't feel like you can't reach out. I absolutely would work with you. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine that confidence thing is, you know, that that affects everybody, doesn't it, across the board, regardless of, of their job role um, yeah. or working in corporate. You know, I think we often stand in our own way. Uh, For sure. And I think I think there's a lot of female <laughs> business owners who could definitely benefit from um somebody like a coach being kind of their own personal cheerleader and I like to use the phrase like you can steal my confidence for a little while if you don't have your own um and yeah any I think anyone in any any industry could definitely do with a little boost sometimes yeah yeah that's brilliant well it's been lovely talking to you Lixie um for our viewers um Lixie's website is life with Lixie Lixie is l-i-x-x-y dot com um that's fantastic thank you very much we'll be back next tuesday at 12 o'clock where we will be having another conversation about stories from my drinking days thank you very much for listening and thanks again lixie thank you